Can you talk about ISO? So you, you shot this golden couple at 1,600 ISO, and I've always been told by professional photographers to keep it as low as possible. Now, clearly you're in the bush, so you need to pump it up a bit, but was that you just through the rangefinder finding the ISO that works, or was that you knowing beforehand exactly what the 1600 is going to give you? Well, in the, in that in that particular location, the, uh, the the forest was quite dense, so it was actually quite darkish. So, mm. in order to get a decent uh, to get a decent shutter speed, also I, you know I was shooting handheld. Um, I tend to shoot with relatively high ISOs because I just don't want to risk having any motion blur. And mm. cameras nowadays are so good, you know the sensors are amazing. My uh, all my all my Nikon cameras, whether it's a D850 or my Z7, at super high ISOs, they still perform very well. As an example, I have there's one photograph in my in my in my book of a leopard drinking. If you look at the EXIF, you'll see that I shot it at uh, I think 51,800 uh, or something ISO. So just uh, ridiculously right high. Yeah. Yet it is um, it's printed in a, in a large uh, at a large format in a, in, a, in a photo book. I think it looks uh, looks pretty good for for ISO that high. So I would say that ISO sixteen hundred is not actually that um, mm. that high at all. If I go on a safari, my default ISO is usually already eight hundred because I know that because I know that gives me high shutter speeds. So if something suddenly jumps, you know, on on my left, and it happens to be like a super shaded area in the early morning, then that's that's not going to be a lot of light there. Um, but I have to be fast, you know, if I want to if I want to get that shot, I don't want to be messing around with uh, with ISO. So mm. uh, that's just, that's a little bit of a compromise. But at 1600 ISO, you still don't see any any noise. There's it's obviously a little effect, so it, it affects color saturation a bit. So you lose some, you lose some saturation. You get your, the, the, the characteristics of your, of your pixels look a little bit different. But um, that's a compromise that I'm very happy to, uh, to take because it mm. uh, makes my That's life interesting so much to easier. hear. Um, it's, it's great as well. It's contrary to everything I've been told because I've been walking around uh, say Sweden right now, it's extremely dark. So if there's a cloud over the sky, I mean, it's really dark. So I'm walking around one, 200 ISO thinking, ah, damn it. I don't want to pump it up too much more because all my professional advice so far has been to keep it as low as possible. Um, well, I just should, I should add that, um, there is, there's quite a difference between, uh, for instance, shooting a landscape or our animal is totally static and you have to time and, um, trying to be prepared for something that might happen or trying mm. to shoot something that's just uh, very fast. And for on a safari, you just have to be, always be prepared for the unexpected. So that's why I prefer to have the high ISO. However, when I'm shooting landscapes, I'm shooting the lowest ISO that I can shoot because that means that I just have uh, max, m maximized my uh, dynamic range and uh, capture as much uh, noiseless information as, as possible. But mm. it's especially with the wildlife that I'm, I'm not afraid. If you, if you were to flip through the uh, thumbnails in my book with, and look at all the EXIF information, you'll see that uh, I, I use 1600, 3200, 6400, uh, quite a lot, actually. Mm. Yeah. 